March the 2nd. World attention centers on the Bismarck Sea as word flashes that a 22-ship Jap convoy is heading towards Ley and Salamar. For long, warnings had come of huge enemy ship concentrations at Rabaul. Up to 60 ships had been seen, photographed and bombed by Allied pilots. Shrouded by tropical rainstorms, the convoy was creeping towards its destination when the storm lifted. Reconnaissance planes got a bearing on it and back at Allied air bases, the fun begins. In operations room, well-laid plans for a coordinated attack are finally checked. High officers of the American Air Force and the RAAF know exactly the tasks of their respective commands. It's to be the biggest aerial show of the New Guinea campaign, and more than 130 planes will take part. Zeroes in vicinity. Well, we'll be taking along medicine for them. Scramble, they've been on the leash straining for the go. This is anybody's fight. Kitty Hawks, Cobras, Lightnings, Bostons, Beauforts. B-25s, Liberators, bow fighters. The latter do a grand shooting up job on ships and barges crammed with Jap soldiers seeking escape. From bases further back, majestic flying fortresses climb into the sky. There's trouble brewing for Toyo today, all right. Kitties and Cobras scoot off to warm it up for Jap aircraft seeking to join in the fray from Ley and Salamoa. There go the bow fighters. Our camera is going to ride in one, capturing some of the most sensational pictures of the war. The cameraman must stand up behind the pilot during terrific dives and wild maneuvers, grabbing a shot where he can. This is no joyride. First pictures, a Lockheed Lightning heading for action. This great fighter has twin motors. There's a keen tenseness through all the air crews. A hell of a lot depends on what they do. A Liberator coming up from another base. Well, turn the lot on. The Nips have had this coming to them for a long, long time. There they are. Ak Ak bursts around bombers there before us. Those American bomber boys are certainly doing their stuff. Let them have it, buddy. Fighters turn, scudding in over the sea at mast high level. This is it, boys. Give her the gun. Here we go. He's got trouble enough, temporarily anyway. Let's find a clean skin. There's one. Not a mark up to now. shooting skipper. They're feeling awful sick. They're throwing back plenty at us. The lead is whistling all around. Away to port there's an untouched ship. To starboard are others. Not so happy about the war. That's a fire they won't put out. Remember Manila, Hong Kong, Nanking? And a few others, Mr. Nippon, you'd better duck. Fighters are returning to base to refuel and reload. The American crews are bringing their bombers in for the same purpose. But as they come in, others go out. There's no rest for the unhappy nips. Ground crews descend on the aircraft like a swarm of hornets. They don't get much of the glory, but boy, they do a job. Bombers take on their eggs. Machine gun ammunition is wanted in huge quantities. Cannon shells. That's what we've been pumping into those Jap ships. 
they're off again. But there are no ships left to sink. They got the lot. 22 ships in two days blitzing. 10 warships and 12 transports. There's plenty of work to do, just the same. The convoy carried 15,000 Jap troops destined to reinforce Salamoa. There's plenty of them left in lifeboats and barges dotted over the sea. There's a boat. Tiny speck, center screen. The bow screams down at terrific speed. Miss. One tiny boat in a wide sea isn't so easy to hit. Japs meet their ancestors. Show's over, boys, and the ships are heading home. A bit of insolence for the coves in a neighboring bow, which is heartily reciprocated. And Torchy, the pilot, takes a victory swig. Good hard stuff, too. Water. The fighters are coming back with victory rolls. Fifty-five nip planes were shot out of combat, as many more heavily damaged. It's been a great day for the Yanks and Aussies. We have achieved a major victory, said General MacArthur of such completeness as to assume the proportions of a major disaster to the enemy. And here's some of the men who achieved it. American bomber crew, grand types of youngsters who didn't miss a trick. And the boys of the RAAF who flew alongside them in a magnificent cooperative effort. Up in New Guinea has grown a marvelous spirit of camaraderie between the Yanks and the Aussies. They get along. Let's meet some of them. Major E. Lana of San Francisco, Mitchell pilot. Wing Commander B.R. Blackjack Walker of Adelaide. Lieutenant Gordon McCoon, New York City, B-25 pilot. Captain C.L. Jones of South Carolina, Lockheed Lightning pilot. And Major H.T. Hastings of Texas. There's a spot of cross-kidding going on here. Hey, any of you guys seeing nips out there this morning? It was raining nips out there. <laughs> Well, you ought to know. These blokes were shooting them off your tail. What do you mean? He was. They were fretting all over the sky there, trying to follow you in. Well, what do you expect? Well, listen, old boy. Look, you want to remember my age. I'm getting an old man. By Jove, I'm getting old. Just look at that. It was a cracker show from beginning to end. When it comes to a scrap, we Aussies don't want any better coppers than you Yanks. We're tickled to death to know that you're right behind us. Oh, yeah, Blackjack? With you, boy, not behind you. Well, all kidding aside, uh, the results obtained cannot be attributed to any one individual or a group of individuals. It was more like a, a smooth play on a football field. The, uh, every man knew his job and every man did his part. The coordination between the, the RAAF and the American Air Forces was really perfect. They've won a great victory, but the Japs will come again. It won't be easy for them when they do, for they'll face two great air forces fighting side by side in a splendid blood brotherhood that nothing in the future can ever dissolve. Love you.